So today what we're going to be looking at is installing our solid floor red panel system. Now the beauty of this is it has a lot of key benefits. It's not just a panel. We've got the castellations on the panel. These enable us to create the crept bend radiuses so there's less chance of kinking the pipe. It also doubles up those castellations and helps us stop damaging the pipe with foot traffic walking over the system once it's installed before screed's laid. What we've also got is a bridge or a ridge in the base of the tray. Now what that does is the pipe sits on that and sits the pipe off the base of the tray by around 10 millimetres, allowing the screed to fully surround the pipe, giving us a better contact ratio. This in turn gives us a better output from the system uh, and quicker heat up times. Further benefit of the race castellation means it displaces screed volume and on larger projects where there's a lot of floor area, this could result in a major saving in screed costs. Lastly, the castellations also allow us to clip the pipe without having to use staples into the insulation. So first, today we're going to look at the new polypipe underfloor heating control pack. Also, we're going to look at the isolation valves and the auto balancing manifold. So first, moving from left to right, we've got the blending valve, which takes a hot supply and cold supply and ensures that there's a controlled and stable outlet temperature for the underfloor heating system. Moving down from that, we've got a Grunfoss UPM3 pump with the polypipe branding. And at the bottom of that, we've got an elbow. Now, the beauty of this elbow is it enables us to quickly orientate it on the right hand side of the manifold should we need to. And that's due to these two unions either side being easier to swap out and flip round. Moving on from that, we've got the isolation valves that incorporate temperature gauges and that ensures we can read a mean flow temperature running into the system and a mean return temperature coming back. So moving on from the isolation valves is the actual manifold itself, which is an auto balancing manifold, which is unique to polypipe. This incorporates an AFC valve in the manifold, which enables us to, once we set a flow rate, it maintains that flow rate, whether other circuits have shut down or if other circuits are being set up in terms of the flow rate. So it's important to remember before you start with any screeded system, we ensure that we've laid what we call a vapour barrier over the insulation boards. This is to prevent any chemical reaction taking place between the screed and the insulation panel itself. Now what we've also got, as you can see behind me, is what we call the edge expansion. This serves two jobs. It creates a perimeter seal all the way around the room, as so the screed can't get down and underneath the insulation panels. But not only that, it also enables the screed to expand during normal operation as it firmly expands. So when we come to actually install the panel, it's important that you notice on two sides of the panel, there's a larger castellation. This is the three quarter castellation. When we're installing, we want to make sure that these three quarter castellations are touching the perimeter of walls, exposing the smaller castellations on the inside of the room. Then when we come with our next panel to lock it into the first one, we can then again put the three quarter castellation or the larger castellation over the smaller one, which creates a, a good seal preventing any screed getting in between the joints of the panels. So as we said before, as you can see, we've got our next panel with our three quarter castellation or the larger castellation. As we lay that down, that's gonna lock over the smaller half castellation. Just gonna press that down and it's as simple as that. So now we've got to a point where we can't fit a full panel in on the edges. So even though you can overlap the panels, we don't recommend you do this by more than a couple of castellations. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the workbench and I'm going to show you how to, how to cut a panel down. So when you come to actually mark up the panels to cut them to width, it's very important to remember 
that you take your measurement and you add on an additional 10 mil. That's purely and simply because when the three quarter castellation sits over the half, it actually laps the panel by 10 mil. A good tip when you're coming to cut several panels of the same width is to stack them three or four high to give them more rigidity, clamp, clamp them to the workbench if need be, and then you can either cut them to width or length, either using a fine tooth hand saw or a circular saw. Okay, so as you can see, we've cut the panels to size, we've infilled them, locking them in place, and now we're ready to lay a circuit. Before we lay a circuit, it's worth mentioning a good couple of tips here. If we're doing a liquid screed, it's worth stapling the edges down to prevent the screed getting down the edges and lifting the panel. Also, when you come to screed it, it's worth starting in the middle of a room in the centre of a panel so that the screed can pour out and displace evenly and again prevent it from going down the edges and lifting the panels. We're now going to quickly look at where we've cut the smaller panels. We're going to brad all some holes out and put some smaller staples in just to secure them down to prevent the pipe lifting the panels when we're bending them through 90 degrees when we're laying the circuit. So, like I mentioned before, where we've got smaller panels that we've cut to prevent them from lifting up through the tension of the pipe when we're bending around 90 degrees or 180, what we're going to do, we're going to puncture the panel using a brad hole or a flat-headed screwdriver to the same width as a standard staple clip. We can then push this down through the panel into the insulation and that'll just secure that panel down and make, make sure, like I say, it prevents it from lifting. So now we're ready to lay the circuit, as always, we've ensured that we've cut the pipe square, pushed in a polypipe plastic insert, and we're just going to make sure when we push it into the fitting in the manifold that we get through the two clicks, the first one being the O-ring, the second one being the grab ring. Once we've pushed it in, we're just going to do a tug test back down and make sure it doesn't come out the socket, and that just ensures the grab ring secured the pipe. So as you can see, we've come to our first corner and what we're doing is we're trying to achieve a biffler pattern, also known as a spiral pattern. So as we come to our first 90 degree bend to follow the perimeter of the room, we're going to bring it round no less than two castellations. So as you can see there, we've bent it round two. If we were to come round one castellation, it can potentially kink the pipe or stress mark it, which means it's weak in the wall of the pipe and it's no good. If you can't get round two castellations, you can bring it round three, like so. But to, on this particular corner, we'll get it round two and into where we need to be. So as you can see, we've created our spiral pattern or biffler pattern by leaving that 400mm gap when we first started coming round, our return has created the 200mm pipe centres. It's important to note as well, when we come to a middle, that we come round no less than three castellations if we're doing a 180 degree bend. Now not every centre of the room is going to work out perfect, but so long as you're not stretching it around one castellation and potentially kinking the pipe, that's the most important thing. What we're going to do now, we're going to get our return cut to length, pipe insert in, inserting it into the return and the job's done. So as we've laid the circuit, what we need to do next is fill the system 
and then once it's filled and fully bled of air, we can then move on to the pressure test. The recommended pressure test is six bar pressure for no less than an hour. It's also important to remember before we carry out a pressure test that if there is a pump pack assembly fitted, we need to make sure it's isolated from the manifold using the isolation valves that comes with the kit. So, as previously mentioned, one of the key benefits of the red panel system is the fact that the pipe sits lower than the level of the castellation. This helps protect the pipe work from light foot traffic, hence I can walk across it. After the filling process and pressure testing process is complete, prior to the laying of any screed, we can drop the pressure down to free bar while the screed has been laid. It's also important to remember that if we're doing this process during any periods of weather of extreme cold that we take the necessary precautions so that we prevent the pipe work from freezing. For further information on commissioning please refer to our installation guide.